Tell you very much. Jeff Khadebe is the head of policy in the ANC. Uh, many people don't understand what is this head of policy. That is the committee that coordinates all the subcommittees of the NEC, of the ANC. So that is the filter point of all policies of the ANC. So he, he has given you a broad brush of the discussion document from the various subcommittees of the ANC. But what we have realized is that we can have all these policies. If we don't have an organization, we are not going to be able to implement even a quarter of those policies. That is why we have a document on the organizational renewal and to a great extent the second transition. The organizational renewal document is pointing to the importance of keeping the ANC vibrant and relevant. We are making an admission that any organization, it doesn't matter whether it is the ANC or it is the SABC or it is the New Age or it is Transnet, if it becomes complacent, it can disappear. Every organization grows, it matures, and if, if it matures and nothing happens to kickstart the growth, it will ultimately decline. Therefore, all the time, we must always ensure that the ANC is kick-started from time to time. In the document, we're pointing various milestones that reflect the organizational renewal in the ANC. We say 1912 itself was a point of renewal. We say 1940, when Kumar came to, to, as the president of the ANC, that kick-started the growth and renewal and introduced militants in the ANC. The 1961 formation, let me not jump the 1950s, the program of action was a point of renewal. The formation of Mkondo was a point of renewal. The 1969 Murokoro conference was a point of renewal. 1994 was a point. You can go on all the time in the ANC. There is a point in history where we change step. And that is what has kept the ANC relevant for 100 years, is that it has been capable of adapting and, change, and changing. When it adapts, it preserves what is good in the ANC. That is the essence of this, of this document. But what we are saying is that since 1994, the ANC has become a, an organization and a political power in government. It changed from being an organization against government into an organization that governs. But we're raising quite serious questions there. We say, have we been able to mobilize forces of change to appreciate the difference between being a force of change and being a force against government? And we looked into a number of protests that we have witnessed, and we say, there is a character in all these protests. One of the characters is that you will discover that it is mainly ANC activists who are opposing this or that, and we say that is a weakness that must be addressed because it doesn't help every time there is disagreement in a locality, the structures of things break into two and begin to oppose each other and you begin to see protests in the majority of cases, violent protests. And we're saying let's educate our, uh, our forces to appreciate that they can use mass mobilization to enhance and accelerate change. The second thing that we are noticing, we are acknowledging in that, in that document is the fact that if uh, we have consolidated democracy over the past 18 years, we have not just consolidated it as it is stated in the Freedom Charter in the first clause, we have actually went further and institutionalized it what committees are institutionalized, ITP processes. You can go to all the small process, school governing bodies, health committees, uh, and you go to chapter nine institution. That is institutionalization of democracy. So democracy has been institutionalized. But if you link that document to the second transition, we're making another admission that we have not moved as fast as we would have been in actually consolidating a social economic transformation. And that's why the debate about whether we're in the second transition 
or is that the correct term, is irrelevant. Because it is likely to take us into violent polemics about the concept instead of dealing with the issues that, listen, we have consolidated elections every five years, we have institutionalized democracy, therefore at the level of political and democratic uh, enhancement and transformation, we have done well, we have consolidated. But on the socio-economic aspect, we have not consolidated. We need to move with the necessary speed. That's why all the discussion, unfortunately, in the policy discussion, uh, particularly in the economy, that debate, which is very fundamental, has been dealt by what is sensational, land uh, without uh, compensation or nationalization. That has been what has been catching the headlines. What has been missed in the process is to have a discussion that says, in 2004, the ownership of mineral deposits below the surface of the soil as required by the Freedom Charter reverted to the state. But what is it that we should do more to ensure that that ownership translates into benefits that accrue to societies and communities? That is the essence of the debate. And therefore, underlying that debate is the fact that there is poverty that is abject in mining areas, for example. You have a big mind, therefore, the debate is about how do we change our economy from being the one of taking bulk commodities from pit to pot. And therefore, all we talk about is how do we have a rail line that takes that, those commodities from a pit to a pot and send them off? How do we benefit them? That debate is being lost in the process. And in the policy conference, it will, we will have to come back and discuss that that debate. Again, in the land question, which I will just touch briefly, is the fact that we must all be reminded that next year, 2013, will be the centenary of the Native Land Act. Therefore, doing nothing and moving with a slow pace is going to be an emotive issue once we begin to talk about the centenary of the Native Land Act of 1913. So all those discussions are discussions that we say there must be an organization that is having the capacity to run its affairs and an organization that can actually run government effectively. That is why Comrade Jeff referred to the question of the National Development Plan. That National Development Plan is reinforcing the observation made by the ANC itself in a number of areas, whether it is education, it is poverty, it is unemployment, and whether it is health, all of those nine areas identified in the National Development Plan are actually pointing to what we have diagnosed as the ANC. But we are inviting ideas that it is not about the ANC. The ANC doesn't have a monopoly of wisdom. It is about society shaping and not become spectators in a theater of change around them. Society must determine their own destiny. That's why we are inviting these ideas that's why we are here today, that people must contribute, help us think through these issues, because we do not have a monopoly of wisdom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.